today. I am so excited to share one of the most successful and unusually delicious natural African coffees that we've roasted in years. Yes, I'm partial to African naturals. Those are my favorite experiences, the, a little more fruit left on the seed as it's dried in the sun. Uganda exports about 5 million bags of coffee a year, but the majority of it is robusta. Some of Uganda's best Arabica grows along the White Nile in Uganda's northwest, along the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Most coffee buyers are unfamiliar with Uganda's White Nile region. The naturals from this part of Uganda are rich with chocolate flavors and bright, fruity highlights. Tasting this coffee is an incredible and unforgettable experience. When Sippy Falls Mill was designed over 20 years ago, it it was a unique wager on the benefit of central processing in a vast small farm landscape. At that time, coffee farmers traditionally fermented and dried their coffee at home in tiny quantities and sold the small individual harvests to local buyers. The wet mill at Sippy Falls changed the entire dynamic by buying local coffee cherries, processing large volumes quickly, exercising consistent quality control. The result for farmers was higher prices up front for less work and almost no risk of degradation. Sippy Falls began producing honeyed coffees, naturals, and variations on the fully washed profile. Now in 2005, the owners of Sippy Falls decided to replicate their success elsewhere in the country and set up its second wet mill, White Nile, a few kilometers from where the White Nile River meets Lake Albert in the highlands in Uganda's northwest along the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Like Sippy Falls, the White Nile wet mill was created to dry fully washed coffee. However, unlike Sippy Falls, natural processing was an operations priority from day one. For their custom natural processing, coffee cherries come from select high elevation grower communities with a record of impeccable harvesting. These experimental lots are beloved at the White Nile Mill and are the most deliberate. Thanks to the resulting coffee's unique flavor, aroma, and cup quality, the farmers selected for these microlot programs see the highest bonuses for anyone selling cherries to their mill. The difficulty in finding a consistent African natural is insurmountable. The fact that the mill produced the coffees that generally only come from the backyards of subsistence farmers in the depths of the third world, and yet they've elevated this product. <laughs> this is my unicorn. The nose is fresh bread, and there's a remarkable floral quality to this coffee, unlike anything I've seen in years. And I'm not fooling. There's some brown sugar here as well. Mmm. The body has a, a baker's chocolate bite and then it smooths out into fig. It's fully silky in the finish. There's plum. It's quick. It's clean. It's delicious. Yeah, this is it. Mwah! I love you guys. Thanks for stopping in. Have a great cup of coffee and I will see you again. Can't put this down. Mm.